Hello and welcome to this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm Jen Carlos. At the start of Tuesday's meeting of the Planning Board, Chairman George Kingston announced the resignation of member Deborah Bushnell from the board and the appointment by Town Manager Denise Menard of Jonathan Torsha to fill Ms. Bushnell's and, seat. Uh, I'd like to begin by announcing that uh, one of our members, Deb Bushnell, has decided to retire and uh, from the board. And I want to thank her publicly for her time on the board and her time serving as vice chair. She was an asset to the board. Um, I'd also like to welcome our newest member, uh, John Torsha, who uh, has just been appointed by the town manager and has been sworn in, so <clears throat> glad to see him here. Torsha most recently ran in the preliminary election for a seat on the school committee, placing third in total votes behind Sarah Trulio and Susan Mantoni. Much of the business on Tuesday's meeting was taken up with a public hearing on the Hidden Pond subdivision plan presented by developer Al Joyce and engineer Rob Levesque. Hidden Pond subdivision is going to be a 20 lot uh, project. Um, the plan you see before you shows Redstone Drive, which comes to an end here. My plan is oriented north. We have the two old quarry ponds within the subject parcel. So the green area is the subject parcel. Uh, we're planning on doing a minor extension to Redstone Drive. We're also planning on creating a new subdivision road with a cul-de-sac, approximately 1,150 feet long. The subdivision uh, has been proposed for the Linder property surrounding Redstone Lake, a popular recreation area at one time. On Monday and Tuesday afternoon, the recently formed Town Council Budget Subcommittee met to consider ways to further reduce proposed spending in the FY19 budget. Those sessions, which were not recorded for LCAT, were open to the public. Discussion included clarification of limitations on the Council's authority to appropriate revolving fund balances to the general fund, an idea that had been floated at several meetings as an additional funding source for next year's budget. There was also discussion of further reductions to the supplemental requests by the school department, including the elimination of four new positions for which some funding had been left in place as of the last council meeting. On Tuesday, the subcommittee indicated it would support one of the positions, an intensive special needs teacher at the high school. The council meets Tuesday, May 22nd to take up the subcommittee recommendations, as well as take input from the public during the open hearing on the budget proposal. On Wednesday, LCAT hosted a debate between school committee candidates Sarah Trulio and Susan Mantoni. Moderator and ELHS alumnus Pat Varhue posed questions about the school budget, technology, student engagement in governments, and capital needs. How would you as a school committee member balance like district governance from a superintendent or school committee perspective and on-site decision making from teachers or principals within the school? Communication between our administration and um, Mr. Smith is, um, is, is vital and I think that if it's um, a situation that the administration needs to make a decision right there on the spot, then I think that we need to um, entrust that they're going to make the right decisions. Otherwise, if they have the chance to reach out to Mr. Smith um, and run by um, him the, the situation and kind of work together to collaborate and um, come together with the decision that needs to be made, then maybe that's you know probably the best way that we should um, move forward with that. The way that the district is structured right now in terms of having district-wide SMART goals really provides the opportunity for senior leadership to kind of chart the course for where as a whole the five schools are headed. But I think then the locus of control and that autonomy that a building level principal needs to be able to maintain um, as a professional to be able to make those decisions day in and day out is paramount. The full debate is available on LCAT's cable and YouTube channels. In news from the health department, town health officials will be distributing free doses of naloxone, an injectable medicine that helps to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. The health department originally received 17 naloxone doses after requesting them from the town of South Hadley, which had recently received them through a grant. The doses expire at the end of July and will otherwise have to be thrown away. Those interested in obtaining doses of naloxone can make an appointment with the health department by calling 413-525-5400, extension 1103 to receive training on how to use the automatic injectable doses and review signs of an overdose. After a slow start to the growing season, the community gardens at Brown Farm on Hamden Road are ready to sprout another season of vegetable and flower crops for town residents. Volunteer Ralph Page spent last weekend preparing the plots, spreading compost, and road tilling the beds to be ready for staking and planting in the coming weeks. It's getting that time of year. The snow's finally disappeared and uh, the gardeners are ready to get started. So we're going to rototill today on Saturday, and we've got a few other areas to do. We'll uh, clean up the area, take care of some branches and stuff, and uh, the gardeners will be ready to go soon. Well, we've got uh, roughly 25 or 26 total plots. 
Uh, to date, there's 19 gardeners, so we've got uh, probably another six or seven possible uh, gardeners that can sign up. Um, just uh, give the rec department a call and uh, you can sign up directly through the rec department. Myself and Heather Cunningham had approached the selectmen to do some community gardens here. She took the lead on it, done a wonderful job with it, and uh, like I said, I think it's grown. I think the public appreciates it. Uh, we try and donate to the senior center, uh, you know, different crops of uh, vegetables every year, and um, you donate whenever you can. Anyone interested in joining the community gardens may sign up for a plot by calling the East Long Meadow Recreation Department at 525-5437. Now for a look at upcoming events. This Friday, the Recreation Department will host a free movie at the center of town. Residents can stop by to see the film Sing at the center field at 8.15 p.m. At 7 p.m., the field is open to picnicking, so bring food, blankets, and lawn chairs. The rec department will coordinate games for children from approximately 7.30 to 8.15 p.m. There's no entrance fee, but please bring a personal hygiene item or non-perishable item for donation to the EL Council on Aging. On Wednesday, May 23rd, the Birchland Park Middle School Music Programs hold the annual spring concert at the high school auditorium. The concert starts at 7 p.m. And here's what's happening at the library this upcoming week. On Monday, May 21st, is a book folding workshop from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Turn old books into art. Choose from three different designs to create a recycled masterpiece. No experience necessary. All materials will be supplied. This event is open to ages 13 and up. On Wednesday, May 23rd, is a coding party from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. This is a wonderful opportunity for children in grades 3 to 6 to learn basic computer education and coding skills in a fun-filled environment. Sponsored by Bright Start Foundation, call or go online to register as space is limited. And finally, on Friday, May 25th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. is Not Just Knitting, an open space to connect with others, share materials or ideas, and spend a relaxing morning at the library. New members are always welcome. Last week we presented you with a PSA for National Bike Month, but May also happens to be Better Hearing and Speech Month. Here's more on that now. For over 75 years, May has been Better Hearing and Speech Month, a time to raise awareness about communication disorders and available treatment options that can improve the quality of life for those who experience problems speaking, understanding, or hearing. Communication impairments affect the most vulnerable in our society, the young, the aged, the disabled, and the poor. The National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders reports that approximately 43 million people in the United States suffer from a speech, voice, language, or hearing impairment. Almost 28 million people suffer from a hearing loss. Approximately 10% of children have moderate to severe communication impairments, including speech reduction, stuttering, and language learning difficulties. Children with speech and language impairments are four to five times more likely than their peers to experience other language learning disabilities to include significant reading problems. An estimated 28 million Americans Americans have a hearing loss that can be treated, yet fewer than 7 million use a hearing aid. You may have a hearing loss if you frequently ask people to repeat themselves, often turn your ear towards a sound to hear it better, keep the volume on your radio or TV at a level that others say is too loud, or have pain or ringing in your ears. If you relate to any of these statements, stop by an audiologist for a hearing test because even the slightest hearing loss can have a large impact on your day. Hearing loss is treatable and there is no reason for anyone to miss all the important sounds of life. But just as important are speech disorders, 40 million Americans have communication disorders, costing the U.S. approximately 154 to 186 billion annually. By the first grade, roughly 5% of children have noticeable speech disorders and more than 3 million Americans stutter. Approximately 6 to 8 million Americans have some form of language impairment impairment, which is why Better Hearing and Speech Month is so vital, to educate the public and inspire early prevention. We leave you now with a look at last Saturday's annual pancake breakfast at the high school, hosted by the Lions Club. Proceeds from the event benefit the Spartan Girls track and field team. Reminder that the Council holds its public hearing on the budget this Tuesday, May 22nd, at 6 p.m. at the Council on Aging. That's it for this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm Jen Carlos. See you next time.